This might look a bit goofy, but hey, I'm proud of it because this goofy little thing is actually a pretty cool little machine. This is eventually going to be my new router, and it's not like any other boring old router. This guy has quite a few tricks up its sleeve. In this video, I'm going to show you what all it can do and how I put it all together. So stick around. Now before we get too far into this video, I want to take just a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. If you're a fan of the Hardware Haven channel, you know I'm not too shabby at putting together a DIY project or home server. But when it comes to putting together a healthy meal, that's a different story. That's why I'm happy to talk about the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. I'm sure many of you have goals for the new year, and HelloFresh can be a game changer when it comes to sticking to them. With a variety of weekly recipes to choose from, including options like Calorie Smart and Carb Smart, HelloFresh makes it easy to eat well and achieve your goals. Not only do you get top quality ingredients with HelloFresh, but they travel from the farm to you in less than seven days, ensuring that everything is nice and fresh. Plus, they make it easy to save time and be environmentally friendly by delivering everything straight to your door in eco-friendly packaging. And surprisingly, it's often more affordable than the grocery store and 25% cheaper than takeout. My wife and I love using HelloFresh, even though she's a great cook and loves finding new recipes on her own. But sometimes life just gets crazy, and it's nice to have an easy and affordable option for eating healthy and tasty meals. We love trying all the new recipes they offer, but our favorite is definitely the yogurt marinated garlic chicken and the lemony couscous. If you're looking for a way to eat healthy while still preserving your valuable time and money, give HelloFresh a shot. Right now, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use code HARDWAREHAVEN21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Make your new year healthy, stress-free, and delicious with HelloFresh. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you might have seen my previous video installing Proxmox and PFSense on this Odyssey from Seed Studio. And in this video, I'll be doing something really similar, but I'm gonna take advantage of some of the features that the Odyssey offers and take things to the next level. If you're unfamiliar with PFSense or Proxmox, you can check out my video covering them both here, but to sum things up, PFSense is an open source software that turns basically any PC into a router and allows for a lot of control and flexibility. And Proxmox is a hypervisor or operating system that will let us install PFSense as a virtual machine, meaning we can run that and multiple other operating systems all on this one computer. If you are familiar with all of those things, you might be concerned about using a VM for a router. However, this thing seems to be super stable after testing. I'm also going to have a dedicated drive for PFSense, so if Proxmox gets all scrambled up for some reason, I should be able to just boot from the PFSense SSD and at least have my router back up and running. I'll talk more about that in a bit though. Also, all the services I'm running on the system are pretty much reliant on my router, so it's not really a problem if my router goes down or is being serviced. The Odyssey from Seed Studio is packed with a lot of cool features and I.O., and the two that I'm taking advantage of today are the SATA port and the M.2 PCIe slot. In the previous video where I covered PFSense virtualization on this little guy, I had to use a USB to Ethernet adapter to pass through both onboard NICs to the PFSense VM. That way I'd still have network to my Proxmox hypervisor. But today I'm going to use this cool little dual two and a half gigabit Ethernet to M.2 adapter I found on AliExpress. This will let me have four onboard NICs that I can hopefully pass through to VMs or use for Proxmox as needed. I'm also going to add a 2.5 inch 128GB SSD alongside the M.2 SATA SSD. The M.2 drive will be the boot drive and LVM storage for Proxmox, and the 2.5 inch drive will be a dedicated boot drive for PFSense. This allows, as I mentioned earlier, to boot directly from the PFSense drive in case something terrible happens to my Proxmox machine, allowing me to at least get my router back up and running as quickly as possible. Now there's no sense in running PFSense as a virtual machine unless I plan on running other things on this machine as well, which I am, hence the name Ultimate Router. Alongside the router virtual machine, I'm going to set up Pi-hole, which is a DNS sinkhole, or essentially a DNS server between your network and your actual DNS server. It can do cool things like block ads or other malicious content, but I'll mostly be using it just to set up local DNS records so I can, for example, access my router's web UI by going to something like 
https colon slash slash my router dot home instead of having to remember the specific IP address. I'm also going to set up a WireGuard VPN server, which will let me tunnel back into my home network from multiple devices, providing a little bit of security and privacy in certain situations. But the main reason to have a VPN like this is that I'll be able to access devices and services on my home network without having to individually expose ports for them. To keep this video from getting too long, I'm going to stop there. But I could add a lot more things like Nginx for reverse proxying to any of my hosted services, a dedicated dynamic DNS service, or even not network related services like Home Assistant. However, I do like the idea of this just being a network centric server. Also, if you're enjoying this video, maybe give it a like as that goes a long way. Also, if you're new to the channel and this all seems interesting to you, maybe consider subscribing to make sure you see more videos like this when they come out. This all sounds great, you might be saying, but how do we make it all work? Well, the first thing we need to do is assemble all the hardware. Now, to make this the ultimate router, we obviously need to add some hardware, starting with this M.2 to dual 2.5 gigabit NIC. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm also going to be adding in this 128 gigabyte SSD for PFSense, and I'll use this adapter from Seed Studio to connect it to the board. I'll also use this mounting plate to attach the SSD to the top of our case. Now, obviously to fit all of this hardware in here, we're going to need some more space. And Seed Studio makes these cool little stackable middle frames for their re-computer case that we're going to use. I had my buddy Chance cut one of these open so he'd have some room for the two and a half gigabit NICs. After a few modifications to the middle frame as well as the PCI card plate, I ended up with this, which isn't perfect, but I think it gets the job done. With everything ready to go, it was time to just put it all together. With all the hardware assembled, it was clearly time to move on to the software. First, I installed Proxmox the same way I always would, and then enabled IOMMU following Proxmox's guide. IOMMU is required to pass through PCI devices like our NICs. I also quickly labeled the Realtek NICs in the Network tab just to keep things straight. It was obvious which interface was already in use, so I knew the other was going to be the one that gets passed through to PFSense. Then, I started on PFSense by creating a virtual machine. First, I uploaded the PFSense install ISO, which I already had on hand, then started creating a new virtual machine with the OS type other and gave it the installer ISO. I went with Q35 and OVMF instead of CBIOS because I needed PFSense to boot in UEFI so that it could work both in our virtual machine and on bare metal if needed. Because I'm going to pass through the disk, I deleted the default virtual drive. I gave it four CPU cores and selected host as the CPU type to give PFSense access to all the instruction sets on the CPU, and then gave it three gigabytes of memory. Under network, I selected none because I'll be passing through the NICs via PCI pass-through. Before starting up the VM, I needed to pass through our drive and NICs. The NICs were easy because they're all on individual IOMMU groups, so I just passed through each one, selecting all functions and PCI Express since we're running Q35. Passing the disk through wasn't quite as easy since the SATA controller is used for both the SATA port as well as the SATA M.2 boot drive. So instead of using PCI pass through, I was able to follow a guide that I'll link in the description below to pass the disk virtually to the VM, and it worked great. With that all out of the way, I booted up the virtual machine, making sure to uncheck secure boot on the first startup, and then installed PFSense, as I did in the previous video. 
Once installed, I could identify which Intel NIC was which by plugging one in and seeing which interface was shown as up. The 2.5 gigabit interface wasn't listed because BSD, which is what PFSense is built on, doesn't include the correct drivers by default. So following another guide, which I'll also link in the description, I managed to get the correct drivers installed and rebooted the machine. There's also a hardware checksum offloading option in PFSense that needs to be disabled for real Technics or virtualized interfaces to work properly. Because I was expecting some issues with the real Technic at first, I set it up on a separate switch in a 192.168.2 subnet and connected my desktop to that switch just to make sure it worked properly. At first, I thought it wasn't functioning as I couldn't get access to the web or the PFSense admin panel, but then I realized I was just being a bit dumb. Because it was set up as the OPT1 interface and not the LAN interface, there were no default rules set up, so packets weren't being routed anywhere. After copying some rules over from the LAN interface, everything worked perfectly. So I switched over the Intel LAN port to be on the 192.168.2 subnet and on its own switch, and I ran the 2.5 gigabit interface to my 2.5 gigabit switch that my NAS devices and such are on, and everything seemed to be working great. With PFSense set up, it was time to move on to Pi-hole. For this, I decided to run an LXC container rather than a full-fledged VM to help preserve resources. I'm not an expert on LXC containers, or anything I cover on this channel for that matter, but I felt confident enough to give things a shot after a little bit of research. Because I'm comfortable with it, I landed on just downloading the Debian 11 template and creating an LXC container with it that I called Pi-hole. I gave it 8GB of storage, 1 CPU core, and 512 megabytes of RAM. This should be plenty, but if I ever do run into bottlenecks down the road, I can always allocate more resources. I gave it a static IP and spun it up. Running Pi-hole on Debian is as simple as installing curl, running a single script, and then following the instructions. I actually have a whole video covering the setup process on a really old Mac Mini if you're interested in learning more about Pi-hole. With Pi-hole set up, all I needed to do was change the DNS server and the pfSense config, and then the router started handing out the Pi-hole DNS address to all of its DHCP clients. To set up a container for WireGuard, I set up a container in the exact same way as the Pi-hole container, but gave it two CPU cores, just because maybe WireGuard needs a little bit more processing. I don't know. I probably could have run my WireGuard and Pi-hole services on the same container, but I like the idea of having some separation for maintenance and such. And LXC is very lightweight compared to virtual machines. To run WireGuard, there was a little bit of configuration needed on the host machine to make sure all of the tunneling networking stuff worked properly. This is all over my head and way beyond my scope of knowledge, but I'll also link the guide that I referenced in the description. Rather than trying to do all of the WireGuard config manually, I decided to use PyVPN, which can also be set up using a convenient single script. Once again, I just followed the instructions, selecting to force IPv6 routing, creating a new non-root user, and then selecting WireGuard as my VPN protocol. I changed my port to 51821 to avoid conflicts with my actual WireGuard server, which is 51820, and selected a custom DNS server so that I could use my PyHole instance. To run WireGuard, you will need a domain name pointing back to your public IP. You'll probably want to use a dynamic DNS service like DuckDNS since you probably have a dynamic IP address. I've covered this quite a few times before. I set my instance up with a pre-existing domain name that I have and then set up port forwarding on my current actual router to forward port 51821 to my WireGuard container. In the command line, I used the PyVPN tool to create a new peer for my phone and then scan the QR code in the WireGuard app to set up my tunnel. And boom, I had a working VPN over a cellular connection. At this point, everything seemed to be working great after running it for a few hours. I even tested to make sure I could boot directly off of the PFSense SSD. But you may have noticed that I mentioned port forwarding on my actual router a minute ago and not PFSense. That's because I haven't actually swapped this out for my current router yet. And I know that's kind of lame. I mean, why build an ultimate router if I'm not going to use it? Well, I do plan to use this as my actual router, but I just haven't quite had the time to do it. 
I don't mind breaking stuff, and my wife doesn't even care that much when I mess with her computer, but breaking our home internet just isn't really something I want to do until I have a lot of time to troubleshoot while no one else is home. I'd also like to have some time to brush up on my PFSense and networking skills before I make the switch. But just know that I fully plan to make a full video covering it when I do. If this all seems interesting to you, maybe check out this video here where I do a full on deep dive into setting up Proxmox and PCI pass through for a home server. I also want to thank HelloFresh again for making this video possible. And don't forget to go to the description or HelloFresh.com and use code HARDWAREHAVEN21 to get 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's about it for this one though. So as always, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I hope to see you in the next one.